entrepreneurial spirit is characterised by creativity, innovation and risk taking. It is a spirit that should never be allowed to die. Today I would like to tell you about a story about two special entrepreneurs and a special journey. These entrepreneurs had a huge task in understanding and overcoming social inadequacies within their communities. This is a story of two community leaders redefining ordinary within their ha habitats. The two friends came from different parts of the world. They did not speak the same language. They did not like the same music. They did not like the same food, sport. They were not even the same species. They did, however, both have a deep burning entrepreneurial spirit. They also had the same social problem. They had become a dying breed within their communities, within their natural habitat. Despite these social challenges, they both had the belief, the belief and desire that they could achieve anything they put their mind to. They could therefore resonate with one another. The first of the friends was a panda. He was called Bruce. Bruce was born and raised in the mountains. He was raised in the Ganzhou province in central China. Unfortunately, the 20th century did not shine favourably on the pandas in Ganzhou. As a result of farming and other breeding issues, the pandas had significantly de declined throughout the century, century. This historical bear that had thrived for millions of years and had become synonymous with the great nation of China was becoming endangered. When in captivity, the pandas lost their libido. This led to medical scientists trying to establish various breeding programs. One of these programs included giving the pandas Viagra and watching pandas mating. All of these major challenges had understandably had a negative impact on longevity and the risk of survival of this great animal. Bruce was different to many of the pandas in his habitat. Pandas tend to roam the mountains, minding their own business, eating bamboo. Bruce was ambitious, adventurous, he was willing to take risks. With his natural leadership qualities, Bruce had become a pillar amongst his family and his community. Bruce was aware that pandas were endangered and his mission was to raise the plight of the pandas, raise awareness, help breed more pandas, save the panda species and take it from endangered to not vulnerable. Bruce felt he could play a key part in the survival of his fellow pandas. To serve his purpose, Bruce felt like he needed to get out of the forest, get out of the province. If he could get out of the country, perhaps he could identify solutions, bring them back to the community and help overcome the issues first. This was an innovative and risky approach to the problem. Entrepreneurial spirit is characterised by creativity and innovation and risk taking. This entrepreneurial spirit should never be allowed to die. Bruce was indeed an entrepreneurial panda. Bruce decided that he would look to a land of prosperity and forward thinking. He chose Great Britain. He knew that historically the British Empire had grown far and wide. At one time it occupied over a quarter of the land across the world. Perhaps Bruce could learn some principles that he could bring back to his habitat, use them to motivate, inspire and grow the nation of pandas. With a clear vision of his destination, Bruce loaded a 40-foot shipping container with bamboo. Bamboo constitutes 99% of a panda's diet. It is the one commodity that a panda needs for survival. Bruce was nervous. He was not familiar with the UK. He was not familiar with the Western world. He had never left his province. He had never even left the forest. The first city Bruce arrived at was called Kingston-upon-Hull. Known as Hull and located on the northeast coast of England, this port had been for many centuries a global gateway for activity within the whaling and fishing community. It was very entrepreneurial. Unfortunately, the 20th century did not shine favourably on the entrepreneurs of Hull. During the Second World War, Hull was a main target for the opposition. It was heavily bombed. As the second most bombed city outside of London, around 95% of houses were, in, were either demolished or damaged. In the mid-1970s, the Anglo-Icelandic Cod War dispute sealed the demise of the deep sea fishing industry in Hull, the main economy. This historical city and port, which had been renowned for its entrepreneurial spirit, 
and a world leader within whaling and fishing, was now facing a post-industrial decline. This led to very poor results in relation to social deprivation, educational statistics and policing. For many years, Hull consistently had some of the highest unemployment and the lowest school grades throughout the United Kingdom. All of these major challenges had understandably had a negative impact on the economy and the entrepreneurial spirit within the great city. Just like the pandas in Gansu, entrepreneurs in Hull had become an endangered species. These challenging times experienced in Hull for many decades have now spread across towns and cities throughout England. Following the financial crisis of 2008, average debt levels have increased. Bankruptcy has taken a grip of individuals and businesses. This has created a social challenge in terms of education and employment. As people have found it hard to meet their financial obligations, they have left their cities, they have left their regions, they have gone to other countries to find work. In the nation famous for the Industrial Revolution and the British Empire, the entrepreneurial mindset has naturally been suppressed by these hard times. Just like the pandas in Gansu, the entrepreneurial spirit in England has become endangered. In Hull, Bruce was looking for somebody who he could resonate with, somebody who would understand why a panda from the Far East would travel far and wide to try and solve his social problems. Somebody who had similar visions and values. Bruce came across an entrepreneur called Alex. Alex was born and raised in the city of Hull. This was long after the demise of the fishing and whaling industry. Like many in Hull, Alex came from a broken home. He did not achieve any grades at school. In spite of the challenges he had encountered, like Bruce, Alex had a deep, burning entrepreneurial spirit. He had a desire to give back to his community. They had become a dying breed within their respective communities, both Bruce and Alex, but they both had the belief and desire that they could achieve anything they put their mind to. Alex was different to many of the entrepreneurs in his habitat. Entrepreneurs tended to look after their own business, eating, drinking, living the good life. Alex was different, he was collaborative, adventurous, he was willing to share his knowledge and ideas. With his natural leadership qualities, Alex had become a pillar within his family, within his community. Alex was aware that entrepreneurs were endangered. His mission was to raise a profile, to identi identify and ignite the spirit. Alex wanted to take the entrepreneurs from endangered to not vulnerable. He felt like he could play a key part within the growth of his fellow entrepreneurs. To serve the, this purpose, Alex felt he needed to get out of his company, get out of the day-to-day -day grind. If he could get out of the company, identify solutions, bring them back to the community, perhaps he could help solve the issues first. This was an innovative and risky approach to the problem. Entrepreneurial spirit is characterised by creativity and innovation and risk-taking. This is a spirit that should never be allowed to die. I am Alex, and I am indeed an entrepreneurial panda. I have experienced and understood social challenges. I have established a set of principles and values. This is a step-by-step -step process that can be followed and taught to the young, therefore igniting the entrepreneurial spirits of the pandas. These principles are based on understanding the need for bamboo, how the value should be discussed and understood. I use these principles and values in the pursuit of my goals. They have brought me great success. I've developed a training program. It is called the value of bamboo. Value one, proximity is power. Bruce had understood he was an entrepreneurial panda. He needed to find other like-minded individuals to share his goals and his vision with. This meant leaving his, his habitat. Push yourself, go to different environments, surround yourself with those who are going to inspire, educate and motivate. It is said that you become an amalgamation of the five people you spend the most time with. Whether you are a panda leaving the mountains to head to a foreign country, or an entrepreneur talking to a TEDx audience about pandas, follow your passion. Bruce had found myself. I have a very good track record in business. I've come from nothing and I have established many successful businesses. I've won entrepreneur awards both locally and nationally. I've developed an entrepreneurial ecosystem. This has inspired my team. This will enable me to push myself further and follow my passion of bringing more talent through. Together, Bruce and I will become a powerful force as we are motivated to inspire the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial pandas of tomorrow. 
Who are you associating with? Are they pushing you to become the best version of yourself? Value two, the vision board. Value two is to, set, is to ask a set of questions when establishing your vision. Once you know who you are working with, share your ideas. Don't be afraid to sound stupid. It may take three or four ideas to get the one that fits the best. You should then create a visual document. This is known as the vision board. Who? Who have you teamed up with? Now that Bruce and I have found one another, we need a plan. What? What do we want to do? We are motivated to inspire the students, teach them key rules around entrepreneurship and bamboo management. Where? Where do we want to do it? We want to carry workshops across secondary schools throughout England, working with teenagers, providing interactive lessons, teaching values and lessons they will require later in life, then letting them put them into practice with no risk. How? How are they going to do it? We are going to use bamboo as a commodity and show how investing, preserving, managing and compounding the bamboo will lead to growing the amount of bamboo they have. This will help grow the forest economy. We are going to design this to be interactive. The students will be set challenges to work with their parents. They can then pass on the values of bamboo. Why? Why would there be a need for it? Research is vital when exploring an idea. I know from my experience, I would have benefited greatly from learning the value of bamboo at school. Our research confirmed that there are over 7,000 debt problems reported to the Citizens Advice Bureau every single day. Somebody files for bankruptcy every five minutes in the UK. Teaching financial education has become a part of the national curriculum in September 2014. If we can offer an interactive learning programme written and delivered by entrepreneurs, then this would add value to the challenge faced by schools and the future of the economy. When? When is the target date? It is important to put some target dates and deadlines on the vision board. A goal without a deadline is a dream. We have already approached the schools in Hull to get their involvement at the research and development stage of this project. Ask yourself who, what, where, how, why, when. Value three, presenting the vision. Once you have your vision board, you need to articulate your vision and take action. You need to be able to present this clearly. The value of bamboo is important. I am today presenting the panda for the first time. We will incorporate some key principles that we have formed around bamboo, negotiation skills, getting more for less. We will give the students the opportunity to get out of their comfort zone, present their vision board to the rest of the students. We will then set them some tasks that they can work through with their parents. If they practice this, we will give them some vouchers as a reward. This will show them that taking action pays off. We will reward all students that take the values away and implement them. Value four, borrowing bamboo. Once you have your vision, you have articulated it, you may well need to borrow to turn the vision into a reality. If not, at some point, our students will need to invest, maybe in homes, transport, business opportunities. We will advise the students the difference between good debt and bad debt. We will show them assets and liabilities and how they can understand the ramifications of borrowing and the interest rates. This will be demonstrated using bamboo. Instead of money, we believe using bamboo will simplify what can be a complex subject. We will then offer them some bamboo vouchers to invest and show them some very good opportunities. Would you have benefited from the education around borrowing and investing? To have an understanding of the pitfalls and risks that come with borrowing. Value five, preserve the panda. Once you have your bamboo, you can start to cultivate your forest and develop more bamboo. A very valuable lesson here is to preserve the panda. If we run out of bamboo, the panda will die. We must put control measures in place to ensure the panda can live on. We will discuss the opportunities around investments and multiple income streams. The panda can understand ways to develop lots of bamboo around them. Have you got the right control measures in place to protect your downside, protect your bamboo? Value six, the power of compounding your bamboo. The pandas will be shown the very powerful lessons around compound interest. We will teach them how compound interest can either significantly increase the bamboo within the forest or significantly reduce the bamboo within the forest. Once our students understand this, they will be able to earn it and avoid paying it. Would you benefit from knowledge around compound interest and how profitable it can be for you? Value seven, living is giving. 
An entrepreneurial panda wants to share his knowledge and bamboo with his community. For other pandas to survive and thrive, it is very important that the pandas support one another with ideas, time, energy and an infrastructure. This is why we have designed the value of bamboo, to keep the entrepreneurial spirit alive. To take the pandas from endangered to not vulnerable, we need to work together as a community. We need to allow the students to express their creativity, their innovation and their risk taking. We will provide the environments for this to take place, environments similar to TEDx. This is why we will be establishing the Panda Academy, so the entrepreneurial pandas of tomorrow have somewhere to learn and to grow from. They will be providing a community where their spirit can be accessed, their values identified, understood and taken forward. How do you feel when you share your knowledge and you learn from your mentors? Value eight, do what you love and make your move. The most important of all of the values is to follow your passion and make your move. Without taking action, none of the other values will be realized. Once a panda has carried out the creativity, the innovation and the risk taking opportunities as designed within the value of the bamboo program, they should then apply these principles in other areas of their life, whether that is personal, professional or spiritual. Are you doing what you love? Do you love what you do? Entrepreneurial spirit is characterised by creativity, innovation and risk taking. It is a spirit that should never be allowed to die. With the value of bamboo delivered throughout the schools in the United Kingdom, the pandas and the entrepreneurial spirit will live forevermore. Let's redefine ordinary together. Thank you.